Welcome back to Global Spiritual Revolution Radio Media Group here in New York City, New York. Um, we are excited for another powerful broadcast here today uh, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, wherever you are in the world, whether you have a desktop, laptop, iTop, whatever type of top you have, go to Facebook.com uh, forward slash Day 3 TV. Again, beloved, Facebook.com forward slash day three tv you can also send us your questions uh, via email beginning right now at global spiritual revolution radio at yahoo.com again beloved global spiritual revolution radio at yahoo.com we are very excited and very honored uh to have with us a true woman of god uh mm -hmm. in this hour uh, a woman of god who was highly and i mean highly recommended um, and here at Global Spiritual Revolution Radio in New York City, we are so very excited and honored to have with us for the very first time, uh, world-renowned author, actress, minister, teacher, um, the Honorable Miss uh, Robia Scott, and and all of you who are uh, past fans of Buffy and the Vampire Slayer and, and Prince, whatnot, she has been... Uh, in all of the Hollywood and all, and she, she she will definitely tell you about that. But we, we're excited today because of her new book. Um, and this book is entitled Counterfeit Comforts. I like that. Uh, exposing the imposters that keep you from true peace, purpose, and passion. Sister Scott, thank you so much for taking the time out of your schedule to be back with us, to be with us for the first time on Global Spiritual Revolution Radio. Thank you. What an intro. I'll come back anytime with that kind of intro, my friend. <laughs> oh, you got me excited here. All right. <laughs> Facebook.com. Oh, is... the Lord. Right exactly. We are so excited and very honored to have you, woman of God. Facebook.com forward slash day three TV again. Uh, beloved, that's Facebook.com forward slash day three TV. Counterfeit comforts, exposing the imposters that keep you from true peace, purpose, and passion. And we're also going to be discussing. Uh, to our with our audience today, her upcoming new movie uh, in March, uh, entitled Unplanned. So, uh, a woman of God, can you lead us into the mind of God in prayer before we go into today today's discussion? Of course, Father God, we thank you, Lord, for your presence with us right now. We thank you that the angels are encamped around us. Pray right now that anyone who really needs to watch what we're about to do and hear what we're about to do. Holy Spirit, that you would nudge them, that you would just draw them onto this program now. Lord, we offer this time to you. We um, we just ask that it would glorify you, that it would honor you, that there would be a strong anointing on it. And we give you all the glory in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Thank you so much. Facebook.com forward slash D3TV. Again, beloved, Facebook.com forward slash D3TV. Here with Miss Robia Scott. And please go to her website right now, robiascott.com. RubiaScott.com. She is the president and CEO of Rubia Ministries in her upcoming uh, movie, Unplanned. And before we talk about this uh, upcoming movie, uh, tell our audience, and you're already known worldwide, tell um, our Global Spiritual Revolution partners um, who are just meeting you for the first time about who you are, not just what you are, but who you are, what you're called to do, um, give us a kind of a bird's eye view of your background uh, so we can understand the foreground uh, of who you are today. Very powerful. When I was a young girl, I loved dancing around the house like most young girls do. Yeah. And I saw the movie Flashdance. Yes, I'm dating myself. Do we remember Flashdance? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, at that point, I realized, oh, my goodness, you could actually be a dancer outside of your house. It could yes. be a career. So I'm not lying. I went out literally that week and got a big, huge perm so I could look like Jennifer Beals. So I had, you know, this is the 80s, a so big perm, uh, bought a bunch of leg warmers and started taking dance class. So very quickly I progressed. I had a gifting for dancing. Uh, just a few years later, I got an agent, started auditioning. This was the time that MTV was really on the rise. So I was just doing music videos right and left. My first one was Debbie Gibson, Shake Your Love. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. So, <laughs> So I'm all over her video. I mean, I, I did numerous videos. And then uh, one day I got a call to go meet with Prince. He was looking for identical mm -hmm. twins and he could not find authentic twins that he was interested in. And there happened to be another dancer who looked a lot like me. So they brought us in to play this twin role for his album Diamonds and Pearls, mm -hmm. which 
we were hired for was supposed to just be one music video, but it turned into all the videos from the album, the album, album cover, a worldwide tour. So I played the Pearl half of Diamond and Pearl. Wow. Uh, retired from dance because I felt like that was the pinnacle, dancing on stage with Prince in front of 60,000 people at a time. Uh, transitioned into acting, uh, started doing some guest starring roles, and then I got hired for a TV show called Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Again, just like Prince, it was supposed to be one episode, but my character uh, hit it off with uh, the cast, and they kept writing me in, and I wound up doing uh, three seasons of the show. I played the school teacher, Jenny Callender, got killed off that show. Um, <laughs> And it was a good thing because right around that time, I was seeking God. You know, I, I was having a lot of success in my life, uh, traveling the world, making money on TV. But, uh, you know, I believed in God, but I wasn't really living. I wasn't connected to God. And I was just dealing with stuff like we do. I was a chain smoker. I was uh, fearful and anxious. Uh, even though I was making a good amount of money, I was shopping and spending quite a bit. Um, but my main issue, Bishop, was that I was really dealing with food and body image. And you would never know it by looking at me because I've always been fit, I've always been thin. Uh, but being a woman, most of us women uh, deal with this issue. There's some warfare around women in this issue, but especially being a dancer and an actress just evaded the issue. So uh, around this time, I was tormented. I was getting into some eating disorders and I was just looking for freedom, looking for freedom. So I started searching for God and seeking for God and. Uh, you know, the new age movement where I come from in Southern California, that's quite prevalent. So I, I checked that out a little bit, but I was still chain smoking and still tormented. And if I could connect with God in an authentic way, there'd be some breakthrough. So, I mean, I have so many stories, but one funny thing I just want to share with your listeners. Yeah. Such a cool story that the scripture uh, talks about if you seek God with a sincere heart, he'll reveal himself. So God knew I was sincere. And I said, God, you know, reveal yourself to me. I don't really get this whole born again Christian thing. You know, does that mean I have to go live in Africa and sell all my clothes and sleep on dirt? And I really, I really just didn't know what it meant to be a born again Christian. Can I still have a personality? And what does this mean? So I said, Lord, God, you know, you know, I believe in you, but I'm not sure about Jesus. If this Jesus is real and you want me to pursue it, give me something. Give me a sign. Speak to me. So as I'm praying this, I'm literally in my car on the freeway driving to an audition. Yeah. All of a sudden, I notice that my little car is encompassed by the Hell's Angels biker gang. Wow. So I'm thinking, oh my goodness. Wow. I'm praying. I've got Hell's Angels all around me with their leather jackets on, yes. bikers in front of me, <laughs> bikers on either side of me. Right. I'm surrounded. So listen to this, I look a little more closely, I've got two bikes in front of me and they have their leather jackets on and on the back of their leather jackets, there's a big cross and on top of the cross it says, we ride for Jesus. Oh, glory. Hello. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I said, okay God, this is the God I'm talking about. Yes. Funny, showing me Jesus bikers. So uh, it was just a, a, a bunch of different things that happened that I wound up going to a church. I actually got saved in Kenneth Ulmer's church. Do you know Bishop Ulmer? Yes, absolutely. In Inglewood. In Inglewood, yes. Faithful Central. Yes. So I met this gal at an audition and she took me to her church and it was just you know, dynamic and gospel and powerful. Yes. And that is where I became a Christian wow. many years ago. Wow. And yeah. What is your home church? Are you a pastor of church or what is your home church or your pastor's name? Or Well, uh, we were. My husband and I did plant a church a few years ago and we uh, were not really pastors. We did it more from an apostolic place, okay. uh, wanting to birth something in the region, which we did. Yeah. And we were just waiting and praying for those pastors to come and take the baton and they just never did. <laughs> wow. So, uh, we've kind of felt that we had done our work there and we've released a lot in the people, a lot in the atmosphere. It was more of a conservative atmosphere and we really moved in the in the power and the gifts and the presence and the prophetic. And um, so we just really transitioned out of that. And now we are, um, we're kind of bopping around a little bit. We haven't, we haven't planted, 
I'm also traveling a ton right now with the movie, but we'll get to that. But yes. that, that's where we are right now with the church. Oh, awesome. Uh, yeah. Facebook.com forward slash day three TV. Again, beloved, Facebook.com forward slash day three TV. Uh, we are here with a true woman of God uh, for this hour, the Honorable Miss Arubia Scott. Um, counterfeit comforts exposing the apostles that keep you from true peace, purpose, and passion. What propelled you, uh, woman of God, to write a book of this caliber. Why that topic, number one, and number two, why the subtopic is exposing the imposter. So what led you to write a book of this caliber? When I first came into the church, when I got saved, God started moving in my life in so many ways. I was filled with the Holy Spirit. I was feeling the presence of God. I was learning the word. It was a powerful time in my life. However, simultaneously, my issue with food got worse. So I thought, what the heck's going on here? Yeah. I'm a Christian now. You know, why is this getting worse? Why is my struggle, why is it intensified? Right. Well, I prayed about it, and I had just started reading the Word. And what, what's so incredible about the Bible is that the more you know, the more the Holy Spirit can speak to you. Yes. More vocabulary he has to speak to you. Mm -hmm. So as I was seeking God, I said, what's going on here? And I just remember John 10, 10, the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Yes. So I felt like the Lord was speaking to me and saying, you know, now that you're on the path of destiny, now that you're really, you're in me, and we're going to start to really move you forward in, in what I've called you to do, yes. you better believe the enemy is turning up the heat. Mm -hmm. He comes to steal, kill, and destroy everybody. But now that you're on, on course, he's going to he's gonna look for those vulnerabilities and try to take you out. Wow. So I said, okay, God, I've got I to gotta really deal with this. So I cried out. I was seeking God's his voice, his presence, his face. I said, what is going on with food? Why can't I get free from food? Mm -hmm. My spirit, I felt like the Lord said, food is not your issue. Mm. And I thought, what do you mean? Food seems to be my issue, Lord. And then I heard this phrase. I have never heard it preached anywhere. It was completely original. The Lord said, you are using food as a counterfeit comfort. Wow. And wow. so I went, whoa, hold on. And right whoa. away, the spirit of revelation hit me. And I knew that there was a, a real comforter. Yes. And then there, was, there were false comforters. Right. And God said, your issue with food has nothing to do with food. Mm -hmm to do with the fact that when you are fearful, when you're anxious, the things you haven't dealt with in your past, your wound, rejection, abandonment, you are turning to food for comfort. So food problem is really just a fruit to an unhealthy root. Repeat that again. I, I that's, That is a powerful, anointed and revelatory statement you just made. Make that statement again concerning what you just said. Thank you, sir. My counterfeit comfort and everyone's counterfeit comforts, alcohol, cigarettes, over shopping, over exercising, overworking, mm -hmm. overeating. Some of those things aren't bad, but when you do them over, you're in bondage to them. What the Lord said is you try to fix it from the outside in, but that what you think is your problem is really just a fruit is really just a symptom, is really just the manifestation of an unhealthy root. So you, if you... This is... And not to cut you off, <laughs> I'm telling you, the, the anointing of the Lord is, is upon you, uh, as always today. You made mention, and I want to get back to that root here in a minute. Yeah. You made mention trying to avoid pain is the most painful way to live. Explain that for us. You know, it's another quote I have in my book. I also say you have to feel and deal in order to heal. Wow. Oh my. And we're not really taught it, Bishop, at home. We're not really taught it at school. And sometimes we're not even really taught it at church. Wow. You know, we try to just put on this righteousness and this joy, but we've got some funk and junk and gunk that's yes. buried in there. <laughs> and just because you become a Christian doesn't mean it's automatically... Um, dealt with, you know, third John two is really one of my core scriptures. And it's the crux of this book, which is beloved. I pray above all things that you prosper and are in health, even as your soul prospers, even as your mind prospers, even as your will prospers, even as your emotions prosper. Yes. So God took me through this whole process of learning how to deal with my emotions, getting to the root 
And he yes. said, once you deal with the root, the fruit will take care of itself. Wow. You know what, woman of God, this is, again, revelatory, and it is a great honor to be sitting at your feet in Christ today. We have a, a true woman of God in every sense of the word, uh, a powerful vessel whom God has uniquely and meticulously created in the person of Miss Rubia Scott. Please go to her website right now, rubiascott.com, rubiascott.com, and we're, we're going to be discussing... Uh, you know, her upcoming uh, movie uh, coming up in March, Unplanned. And I can't wait for us to get into that. Um, it, it, the Lord spoke to me, uh, oh God, many years ago. And I had shared this uh, with many people and, and said that the body of Christ, specifically leadership, they know what they are, but they don't know who they are. Mm -hmm. uh, and many times, especially as preachers, we think that the title is, is who we are. And the Lord had to show me, woman of God, the title, uh, Bishop is what I am, but not who I am. Uh, in your travels around the world, but before we get into the crux of your book, is this a problem that you that you have witnessed with, with pastors and leaders that they 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 stick they connect their identity mm. with titles, mm. with degrees, with things. Not <sighs> saying that to say this is nothing wrong with those things, but that's not who we are. What is the spirit of the Lord and the mind of God showing you uh, concerning this problem of not knowing who we are, but only what we are? Well, we all have a need for significance. That's a basic need that God gave us. We want to leave an impact on the world. We want to make a difference. So sometimes that title is, just gives you that sense of, yes, I'm validated. You know, it, this is this is good. This is who I am. And, and that's okay. But, you know, what he's been showing me recently is that we're carriers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Everyone that's a believer is a carrier. And we all have the Holy Spirit. We all have the presence, the person, the power of God. Yeah. But it's really the degree to which you purge, heal, release. That's the degree that, that what is in you comes forth. Mm. So, you know, you can hear a lot of teachers and they can, they can share a good message, but it's not really words that change people. It's it's the, the the frequency, if you will, it's the power. It's the anointing. That's why we have that saying. It's not taught. It's caught. So, you know <laughs> what I'm good. saying? So if you're if wow. you're a person, if you allow God to really do a deep work in you, you start operating in a different realm. Mm. It's like your water, your spirit, your frequency. There's right. something that's released off of you that just like in the Bible, they touched the, they walked by a, you know, a shadow hit them and they were touched. Yes. A that they touched hit them. So, you know, hear what I'm saying here. It's not about just trying to do a good teaching or using persuasive words, as Paul said, but not a demonstration of power. So, you know, for all of us as believers, but especially leaders, it's a constant, um, it's a constant being washed with the water. It's a constant uh, letting God into those deep places so that what you're releasing is this fresh water. And that has nothing to do with a title. Absolutely nothing. <laughs> <laughs> this is, again, let's get into part one of this book, uh, Counterfeit Comforts. The only way to is through. Uh, break that down for us. So we can't just circumvent some junk and try to jump into righteousness or jump into peace or jump into joy. Yes, it's a promise from God, but the only way to those things is through some things that are blocking the peace, the joy, the freedom. So I, if I'm having a bunch of um, rejection and wounds and offenses and things in my heart, and then I'm just trying to put on joy, that's not authentic. The only way to really live in, reside in peace, power, purpose, wellness, rest, 
is you have to be brave. You have to be willing to go through some of the things that it's very natural for us and even conditioned to press down. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, we smoke it down. Yes. We drink it down. <laughs> we busy it down. Yes. Cell phone it down because yes. we just keep our faces here. <laughs> you know, more than ever, it's yes. so easy to be distracted and to not be still and know that I am God and really reflect to be in that place of connection. So yeah, to really get to those promises that are available to all of us, we have to go through some things that might be a little painful, mm-hmm. might be a little bit difficult. Uh, You know, all of us, we've been through traumas, all of us. And the last thing you want to do is revisit that. You just want to close that door and you just want to try to move on. Exactly. You know, there's a time to close the door, but it's after you've cleaned out the closet. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. (laughs) (laughs) And you know what, woman of God, this is this is interesting. Before we get into the deep here, uh, part two of your book, Counterfeit Comforts, the Lord had revealed to me, spoke to me uh, not too long ago that the pain to remain the same uh sometimes is greater than the pain to change and people would rather stay in the pain in in order to remain the same in order to accept the pain to change am i correct in saying this well i i think that yes that is common but i would like to say that i hope not i sense that many people don't know how to truly go through the process of changing Yes. And that's where I feel called, passionate, equipped. Uh, I'm a very how-to teacher. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I got frustrated sometimes in church where I heard all these concepts. Uh, you know, Bishop, just just surrender it. Just yes. surrender it to the Lord. Just trust Him. Just cast your cares. Yes. Well, how do I do that when I feel like I want to binge and I want to shove Oreos in my face? <laughs> you know, what does that mean? Just just cast my cares. Right. You know, how do I? How do I do that for real? Mm -hmm. So I think, I believe, and I've seen it in my ministry, people that I I coach, I disciple, I impart to, if you give them the tools of transformation and you show them these are biblical tools, this is how you do it, it might hurt a little bit, it might be a little bit of work, but you're working through it, you're working in the right direction, and then when you start tasting the fruit of the other side, when you start feeling that you come out from under the torment, when you come out from under the anxiety, when you come out from under the fear, when you come out from under the addictions, all of a sudden, you're fine with doing a little bit of work. You're right. fine with dealing with some stuff because you want that stuff up and out yes. so you can free to be what God calls you to be. <laughs> it's so liberating, too. And, and again, you have a very unique mantle. And I sense here today, you are a woman. You know who you are. You know your lane. Um, Facebook.com forward slash day three TV again, uh, beloved Facebook.com forward slash day three TV counterfeit comforts um, into the deep um, as we're continuing to lay this foundation from your book uh, delve into that into the deep. What, what, what is the mind of God showing you in, in that chapter? That was one of the first scriptures that resonated with me in Luke 5, where Jesus said, push away from the land, Yes. cast your net into the deep. And what the Spirit of God spoke to me with that is that you, the land is familiar. The land is where you have your footing. You know how to navigate the land. But the Lord wants you to come out a little bit from the familiar, from the security and trust him just like you know peter walking on the water Mm -hmm. step into that and come into the deeper things and what i love to uh, make clear is that god is with you yes god doesn't leave you in this place of figuring out who you are and going into some grief he will be right there with you in the deep yes and this little dance that you navigate where you start to take your hands off it a little bit and you start to cling to him, uh-huh. and it, it, you know, you can't, I can't quite put it into words, but it's the spiritual place where you just start to transfer dependence, uh-huh. which is something that the Lord told me with counterfeit comforts. He said, if you allow me, I will show you how to transfer your dependence from the counterfeit onto the wow. true comfort. <laughs> wow. Lord said, let's walk this out together. Yes. I said, okay. Hey. So 
So I started to get into this process a bit, going deep. Hence the book. <laughs> what if I would ask you for a one sentence answer to this question, define counterfeit, what would you say? A counterfeit is an imposter. A counterfeit is something that looks like the real thing, mm -hmm. but is not the real thing. A counterfeit is something that can give you instant gratification, but in the end it kind of hooks you and traps you. Mm -hmm. And yes, a counterfeit comfort can really be anything that you find that you turn to when stuff's going on inside of you. And that thing all of a sudden starts to lose its original intent. You know, food is a blessing from God. It's a gift from God. But when I start to look to food to do something that food was never meant to do, then all of a sudden there's ice cream and binging and not right. that ice cream's bad, <laughs> but you start using food um, to fill something that food isn't supposed to fill. And right. then there's a spiritual dynamic, there's a soul dynamic, and all of a sudden you're in bondage. And the thing about counterfeit comforts is I have to say, from what I've experienced, they're universal. Wow. My comfort might be a little different than yours, but we all have them. <laughs> so it's about really, uh, it's not that God's mad at us. This is something I share all, often throughout counterfeit comforts. God's not mad at us. No. For counterfeit comforts. Oh, He's glory. not judging us. Oh, We're not bad Christians. All he wants to do is release us because he sees us being controlled and he doesn't want us to live on this earth being controlled by food, by alcohol, That's by it. relationships, by money. We can have all the money that doesn't control us. We can eat all the food that doesn't control us. God wants to bless us. He just doesn't want us to see us in bondage. You know, I had a guest on not too long ago and... Um... It's I, I got the sense before we go into parts three, four, and five of your book. Um, you broke it down, Bishop. You went right in there. Oh, I do. I know. I know. I, I just, I don't know. I feel a Roby a Scott anointing upon me today. Oh, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Facebook.com forward slash day three TV. Again, beloved, uh, Facebook.com forward slash day three TV. This victim mentality, especially, and, uh, and I'm speaking to... Um, people of color, and I'm not saying to all of our African American brothers and sisters have this type of psychology, but um, I'm teaching um, my generation and the generation before me, um, and the generation after me, especially. We got to break ourselves away from this victim mentality. You know, um, you know. I would hear my daughter say, "Well, Dad, I got to work." 10 times harder because I'm a black woman. I say, stop. No, 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 no. That, that thinking has got the change. Uh, uh, what say you in that regard? This victim, this victimology mentality that really is, has become the root, as you say, um, that root um, that is really keeping a lot of, um, you know, communities in bondage. Um, what say you? powerful what you're speaking about right now I just recently touched on this and taught it in my coaching program which by the way if people want to connect with me a bit more and really uh, you know you can get a lot of what you need in the book right here yeah. but if you want to walk it out with someone that's what I love to do yeah. Bishop. Yeah. I love to walk it out and take people through the process uh, so you've got the Holy Spirit and then you've got me your little cheerleader walking walking you <laughs> through it. But, you know, the Bible says it so clearly, as a man believes in his heart, so is. There you go. <laughs> as a man believes That's in powerful. his heart, so is yeah. he. So something I've been meditating on, studying, praying into, is how do we really change what we believe in our heart? Wow. Because we can try to think differently, or we can try to say, oh, I guess I'm not a victim. But What's the process of identifying where those beliefs originated? We're going to just go deep. Where those beliefs originated, is it cultural? Was it something that was spoken over me? Was it conditioning? Did I have some experiences in life where people said a few things, some word curses that just took root 
that form this belief system. So then I have the word of God. I have church. I know all that's true. I can say it. I can read it. But deep, deep, deep down, there's a discrepancy from really what I believe. Yes. So how do I get into my heart and change the beliefs? The Bible says it again. All the issues of our life are really a reflection of what's going on on in our heart inside wow so just the comfort our world society we like to change things from the outside in oh i want to change my eating habits so i can deal with my food issue no 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 everything comes from the heart <laughs> yes it's an inside work god loves to do an inside job you notice what jesus said uh at the tomb of lazarus he says lazarus come for but he never said his title to come forth uh, and, and I want our listeners to, to listen to this because, again, our title cannot liberate us. Only the power of Christ, of us allowing Christ to bring out who we are, not what we do, can uh, liberate us. I, am I correct in saying this, woman of God? I'm with you 100% on that. Again, the title is sort of from the outside in. There's nothing yes. wrong with the title, but if you just want that title on the outside— but you're avoiding doing the work on the inside, the title's fine, but it'll only take you so far. But when you do the inside work, you can just zoom right past a title. I mean, it'll, it'll, it'll propel you past what a title could ever do for you. Yes. Because everything in your life is a reflection of what's in your heart. And when you go deep with God and you allow him to get in there and do some healing, then those things start happening in your life, those suddenlies of God, where everyone else has to go A, B, C, D, where the lady you were mentioning, your daughter, uh, you know, she thinks she has to work harder, harder, harder. But yeah. when you get into that place where you really seek first the kingdom, you know how to do that inner work, all of a sudden other people are saying A, B, C, D, E, F, and yeah. you go A, Z, and you're just bam, <laughs> just bam, suddenly of God. That's it. That's it. <laughs> It, 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 but wow. this stuff doesn't just happen. You know, this is where I'm finding, this is something I'm super passionate about. I'm yes. seeing in our Christian world, you know, we love these catchphrases. We love, you know, breakthrough and suddenly and God, God's doing it. Yes. And God's happening. And everyone says, <laughs> I receive it. I receive it. And, you know, that's great to receive it, but I got to make it real. Yes. God's doing these prophetic things, but there's a way to get in that prophetic rhythm and flow where you actually can start to uh, walk out and move in that direction of what God's doing. It doesn't just happen because you're in the body of Christ. Yes. You know, yes, God loves us. Yes, there's grace. Yes, he will do miracles just for no reason because that's God and he's awesome. But, uh, you know, a supernatural, crazy miracle is a wonderful thing. Yes. But if you get one, and I hope you do, listener, watcher, <laughs> I hope you get a miracle, there's still the other 90% of your life that you got to walk out in process. Oh, my God. I love that. The, it's the processing. Many are called, but few are chosen. So from the call to being chosen is that time of processing. People don't want that, Sister Scott. No, they, they, nope. want, they want the crown, but not the cross. It's fight the good fight of faith. It's a fight. It's a it's a battle. It's it's a learning process. It's uh, you know how do I stand in faith regardless of the circumstances? You know healing is in layers and levels. It does not just happen all at once. Yes. It's this this walk with God. You know deliverance doesn't just happen all at once. Sometimes yes. one prayer can do a lot. Oh my yes. goodness, one prayer can do a lot. But often before you know it, two years down the line, God's working on another layer, and then six there months down go. the line working on another layer. Yes. So, you know, when we start to learn that it is a process, that there's a method to the process, that yes. there's biblical principles, that there's tools, that there's keys to help you move forward in the process, then this walk with God gets exciting. Mm. A lot of people are healed physically, but very few are cured emotionally. <laughs> That's a good word. Let me say that again. A lot of people are healed physically, but very few people are cured emotionally. And allow me to go one step deeper into this. Though you may be cured emotionally, but the question is, are you made whole spiritually? So you talked about those layers, you know, physical, healed, emotional, cured spiritual made whole. I'm telling you, um, you're teaching me today, woman of God, 
I'm telling you, Facebook.com forward slash day three TV. Again, Facebook.com forward slash day three TV. Uh, counterfeit comforts, um, the choice point and feelings for no foe. What made you to come up with those those topics? The choice point, again, the Lord walked me through this process, this how to. How do I transfer my dependence from food to God? Does it just happen because I say, God, please transfer my dependence from food to you? <laughs> right. Does it, you know, is it just a prayer I say in the morning? Right. And the Lord said, no, it's not a prayer you say in the morning. The prayer you say in the morning is powerful because that sensitizes you to hearing my spirit throughout the day. Mm, wow. So the more you pray in the morning, the more sensitive you are throughout the day. But just praying in the morning and then going throughout your day is not how you change. It's what you do in the moment by moment choice. So it's that when I have that unction to binge, that's where God spoke to me. And he said, come to me before you go run to that. I want you to just take a moment, just a moment and come to me. And let's see if we can uncover what's really going on. Because often we run to these things, uh, these negative, destructive patterns and habits, and we don't even realize what we're doing or why we're doing it. So he, he said, you know, he gave me a funny um uh, a funny little visual. He reminded me when I was a young girl in school and sitting behind my little desk and you watch the fire drill video at school. Mm -hmm. And do you remember what happens when someone's on fire? Do they just get up and run wildly no, throughout no. the school? <laughs> no, you don't run. You have right. to stop, drop and roll hmm. to extinguish the fire. So yeah. God is so funny. And he talks to me in the funniest ways. He said, this is what I want you to do. When you're on fire, when you're feeling a bunch of feelings, you're running. You're running to the chocolate chip cookies. You're running. Yes. I want you to practice stop, drop, and roll for one minute. <laughs> Give me one or two minutes. And and then let's let's see if with the Holy Spirit we can uncover what's really going on. Wow. So I started to practice this. I started to say, okay, I feel anxious. I just want to eat. I feel that thing coming at me, that spiritual thing where I just want to binge. Mm -hmm. So I say, okay, Holy Spirit. <laughs> You show me something and he would start to work with me a little bit and let me tell you every time I didn't hear God every time it wasn't powerful sometimes I felt nothing and I would just go and act out anyway and God said don't worry about it it's a process we're learning how to do this you're not going to be perfect yes sometimes Bishop he would he would show me and he would say you know I would kind of talk with myself and I walk people through this in the book counterfeit comforts what are you feeling what's going on can you even identify you're having a feeling okay I'm feeling uh, fearful, feeling anxious. Okay, so you can go a little deeper. Why are you feeling anxious? Because um, I'm on my way to this audition and that brings up a lot of fear. Okay, why? What's going on with that? Because I feel like I just want them to like me. I just want to get this job. I just, I just want that acceptance. And then the Holy Spirit would start to show me, well, where did that come from? This need for acceptance. <laughs> and he'd start to take me into those vulnerable places. Oh. You know, never really felt like my dad was there. You know, never really felt like I had that security because my parents were divorced. Always felt like I'm kind of on my own. And then you go into these intimate places with the Lord where there might be some tears, there might be some journaling. Yes. You know, this is where he would take me into those roots. <laughs> yes. And I had encounters and I call it on the floor. I call it the on the floor ministry because so much of what happened in my healing was not at church, even though I got a lot of healing at church, but it was on the floor, just laying on the floor with God saying, all right, God, here I am. <laughs> Speak to me, show me. And at one point it was so sweet because I felt like God was introducing me. He was saying, I'd like to introduce you to you. <laughs> wow. Repeat that again. I love that. Repeat that again. I felt as if the Lord through this process at one point he said, Rabia, Meet Rabia. <laughs> I, I, I'm now starting to introduce you to you, to who you really are. Wow. You know, and, uh, oh and my God. Commit, you, you, you teach me. Go ahead. Go ahead. You, I, a thought came to my mind. Finish your statement. Go, go. Please, please tell me. Tell me. Uh, tell me. I, you know, the master uh, uh, had said in Matthew chapter 7, verse 7, and, and you, when you said the word you, it hit a nerve with me. He says, Ask, and it shall be given you. Then he says, Seek. And ye shall find, and then we circle the word find. And then he says, knock, and the door shall be opened unto you. And we circle the word you. So the very essence of the ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ was to help humanity help you find you. 
I'm preaching this because I'm taking that right there. I'm it, writing it down. You notice that in Matthew 7 and 7. I never so we circle that. you, find you. That's I always it will be given unto you, but I love that. It will be given Give you. You. Woo! Not what you do, but who you are. The anointing cannot operate through a vessel that doesn't know who they are. It can't. It, the nature of the anointing cannot allow itself to operate through a vessel who doesn't know who they are. And and again, again, and and not to take over, but a uh, woman of God, it's a, again a great honor sitting at your feet. I keep telling my daughter and, and other uh, young people of color, your blackness is not who you are. And I'm going to get in trouble for saying this. When you are buried. What you are is buried, but not but who you are goes back to God who gave it. So a, a person's skin color is not who they are. And for some reason, one of the God, you're drawing this out of me, okay? Because <laughs> if your ministry is that, I'm speaking to black America, is that you have to get yourself out of this psychology of blackness that's all that's what you are but that's not who you are mm -hmm. who we are cannot be seen with the naked eye in the mirror who we are is spirit I, am, am i correct in saying this woman of god i am with you uh, it's not blackness it's not whiteness it's godness <laughs> <laughs> uh oh you, you preach it now go ahead because when you get the now. god going it, it does it just overrides all the the tangible the, the yeah. physical you know so yes is there is there you know your heritage and being a person of color that's awesome is there a heritage that you know your cult yes there's there's beautiful things to hold on to in that but if it's limiting you you don't want to hold on to it no. you want to take you know as you say you want to take eat the chicken and throw out the bones you want to take what's good <laughs> and hold on to it but you don't want to hold so tightly that it's actually limiting Oh, man, I, I like this uh, on the floor and my the personal floor. process. I know you went through that. We you kind of touched on that, but take us through that again on the floor in my personal process. Yes, on the floor was that time I had with God, just being close with him, letting him reveal himself to me and letting him reveal me to me. And I went through the process of healing. I'm trying to think what story I want to tell you. I've got some good stories. Yes. Let me, let me tell you this story. So I'm on the floor and I'm feeling as if God is kind of opening me up. There's one time in particular that I'm crying and I'm having a deep moment with God. Just, it's very deep. I have tissues and I'm blowing my nose and it's not pretty. It's not pretty. Sometimes healing isn't pretty. And I'm getting into some pain and I'm really feeling it and crying. And, and so I remember I was laying there and I said, oh my gosh, God, what are you going to do with me? And it's exactly what you were just saying. It's about the becoming. You know, my ministry is about becoming who you already are, but becoming. I'll tell you another story about that in a second. So I said, God, what are you going to possibly do with me? Because I'm in this place that I talk about in counterfeit comforts that I call the abyss. I'm not who I used to be, but I'm not who I'm going to be. So I'm in this weird interim place where I've let go of things that are familiar and I feel uncomfortable and I just, oh, it's so weird. So I said, God, what on earth are you going to do with me? Mm -hmm. So pause that, cut back to 20 years prior, being a little girl, my favorite show on television was The Bionic Woman. Mm -hmm. Remember Bionic Woman? Yes, absolutely. My favorite show. Lindsay Wagner. Jamie, yeah. Jamie, yeah. Lindsay Wagner, Jamie Summers. I wanted to be the Bionic Woman. My little girlfriend and I played the Bionic Woman. We would run in slow motion outside. <laughs> bye, yeah, 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 yeah. She would call my name and I would say, bye, yeah, 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 yeah. My bionic, <laughs> my bionic ear is picking up your sound waves. So I love the Bionic Woman. It was just my heart. Yes. Wow. So cut back now. 20 years later, I'm on the floor with God and I said... God, what, what is going to happen? Are you going to leave me like this? And this is what I hear in my spirit. We can rebuild her. Wow. We have technology. Woo! Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I'm crying, I'm wow. Crying. God is fun and funny when you go into these places with wow. him. Wow. 
we can rebuild her. That's we powerful. have the technology. Yes. That's, that's the theme <laughs> that was in the beginning of every Bionic yeah. Woman episode. So I'm laughing wow. and, you know, and, and he did little by little. It was a process. It was a process, but he has done some deep healing work in me and it's not done. It's never done. <laughs> but wow. I, I will tell you this, um, you know, I, I haven't arrived. I, I, I deal with things, but I don't deal with things the way I used to. And I don't, I'm not under things the way I used to be. I, I'm not under heaviness. I'm not, my mind isn't fearful and tormented. I'm not bound to food or my body. I'm not bound to these things anymore. So I'm saying that to those that are watching and listening. Am I a hundred percent there? No. Do I struggle? Am I growing? Yes. But is there, regardless of what you're going through, is there a place where you can get out from under that? There absolutely is. There absolutely is. You can get your mind back. You can get your peace back. You can sleep. You can um, feel uh, joyous. You can go through your life not being controlled by anything except the power of the Holy Spirit. And even that won't control you because God is not a, the author of control. <laughs> Come on now. That's it. <laughs> so, wow. I'm gonna, I want to ask you a question here. Kind of one question with the two pronged set. Who is Robia Scott and what is Robia Scott? My goodness, no one's ever asked me that way before. Mm -hmm. Who am I and what am I? Yes. <sighs> I'm a spirit being in a, in a body. Mm -hmm. I'm a, a mom. I'm a wife. I'm a lover of God. I'm a lover of truth. I'm a passionate, fiery, feisty powerhouse person. Mm -hmm. Uh, I love seeing people healed. I love seeing people set free. There's nothing I love more than being in the anointing and the presence and power of God. Mm. What am I? I don't know. Am I answering it? Tell me. Mm -hmm. No, you're doing good. <laughs> you're doing great. That's the, you're hitting teacher. it right on the button. Absolutely. I'm a, teacher, I'm a speaker. I'm a lover of truth. I'm a lover of tools. Um, the spirit of God is powerful. The word of God is powerful. And I'm just a, I'm a vessel and I'm continually growing. I'm continually growing oh, to, um, to, to, um, second Corinthians seven. I think it is about being purified of all the filth and the flesh and spirit. That's not a judgment. It's just, I'm, I'm this constant purification, purifying my heart, purifying my soul, purifying even my spirit from generational things, from soul things, so that I can constantly be uh, a greater wineskin and a greater vessel that God's glory can pour out of and and uh, train people, equip people, heal people, release people, bring truth to the planet. Woo. I love the, the, the capsule of your book. Again, counterfeit comfort. So we go from the only way to is through to the bookend of don't give up is this yeah. entire book about you as well i mean many times the author i've talked i've interviewed many authors before they can write about light they're actually writing them about themselves am i correct in saying that concerning you a woman what do you have to write from experience mm -hmm. you have to teach and preach and minister and release from experience um, from experiential knowledge, not just head knowledge. But the book is not about me in the sense that, hey, this is just my testimony and I want you to read my story about me. It's not that at all. It's uh, what I went through, what I learned, the biblical tools that God uh, opened up to my understanding, how I applied them, uh, and then helping other people navigate. You know, it's not a one, two, three formula. But there's ways that, you know, you can navigate a little bit where I can help kind of push you in a certain direction. You know, I, I like to say that, you know, a good teacher, you know, will give you the answers, but a really great teacher show you how to get your own answers. Mm. So, you know, like what, cha what changed me was hearing from God. You know, you didn't tell me counterfeit comforts. A pastor didn't tell me. A counselor didn't tell me. Um, and that's great too. I love secondhand revelation. I love to hear someone else teach me and impart to me. That is a piece of the walk of God. But I love to teach people how to get firsthand revelation, 
because I might prophetically share some things with about your life. I might help open some things up, but I also want to help show you how to get into the place where God can talk to you about you because he'll show you things that I'll never see, that no one will ever see. Wow. That's the gets powerful. And that's the essence, one of the pieces of counterfeit comforts, teaching those that uh, are believers and maybe unbelievers too, how to get into that place where they experience God, where they hear his voice. That is, you know, teaching uh, is preaching at a slower pace while preaching is teaching at, at a faster pace. We got, we don't have a, uh, a lack of preachers, but we have a lack of teachers and you have a heavy teaching anointing and a heavy mantle upon your life, woman of God. I, I see more greatness yet to come in your life and you are a direct threat to the devil's kingdom, my sister. You are. I mean... The, the, the devil wants to take you out, but no weapon that's formed against you. Amen. You know, when you're really doing something for the kingdom, you're going to have resistance. Yes. You're going to have opposition. But another thing I believe in is tribe, and that's what I do with my coaching. We are a tribe of people because we can't really walk out this, this dream and this destiny alone. You know, I have a piece that's going to assist you in what God's called you to do. You have a piece that's going to assist me. Yes. So, you know, there is warfare. And the greater the call, the greater the warfare. That's why we need intercessors. And I'm so grateful for my team of intercessors. And we need people to walk this out with. So, again, for your listeners and watchers, if you don't feel like you have some people to walk this out with, I will walk it out with you. Even if you're planted in your church, your, your pastors are your spiritual mom and dad. They're your main one. But sometimes it's good to have a little auntie or a little cousin on the side who might, <laughs> that might be me, I might be your little cousin, your little auntie, yes. who has a little piece that helps to supplement what you're doing in your body at church. Wow. So it's so important that we have coaches. I'm a big believer of coaches. Mm -hmm. Everyone, every field understands coaches more than Christianity. Yes. Athletes understand coaches. No, no elite athlete gets there without a team, without a, literally a coach. And a pastor is wow. not a coach. A pastor is awesome. A pastor is a pastor, Yes. but a coach is a little bit different. And a coach will, will take you where you don't want to go, but where you ought to be. Hmm. Come on, you know that's true. You don't always want to go, but the right coach will help kind of push you outside of your comfort zone, will cheer you on, will run with you. I like to say it's like a good coach is a pace setter. Yeah. When you're running the race, you have a pace yes. setter running next to you. Right. I mean, it helps you keep your stride. <laughs> It helps you finish your race because you have someone setting the pace That's it. with you. Wow. Yeah. We're going to go into a two to three minute break here. We have with us um, world renowned author, act, uh, actress, minister, teacher, life apostolic coach, the Honorable Miss Robia Scott. Um, Robia Scott Ministries, Robia Scott Ministries, Robia Scott.com, Robia Scott.com. And we see you here in about two to three minutes here and only here on Global Spiritual Revolution Radio. Welcome back to Global Spiritual Revolution Radio Media Group here in New York City, New York. We are broadcasting out of our day three radio and television studios here in New York City, New York. We are so excited and very honored to have with us for the very first time uh, speaking um, all over the world to our Global Spiritual Revolution partners, Miss Rubia Scott, uh, world-renowned author, actress, minister, teacher, life apostolic coach and go to her website right now realbiascott.com realbia capital r-o-b-i-a scott.com uh, she is the president and ceo of realbia ministries beautiful beautiful 
uh, family, beautiful uh, husband, uh, daughter, um, the model, the template apostolic woman uh, for this end time. All right. Um, counterfeit comforts, which I want us to go into, kind of matriculate into this movie uh, unplanned. Now, now, first of all, how did you come in contact with this project? Uh, uh, did you get a call by your agent or your, the executive producer of, of, of the movie? How did you come in contact with this project, number one? And number two, what is uh, unplanned? Uh, reveal that to us. Well, a part I left out of my testimony is after I got saved and I was no longer working on Buffy the Vampire Slayer, shortly thereafter I felt that the Lord was calling me out of the entertainment industry. So I walked away. I, I completely left the industry and jumped into full-time ministry before I even had a ministry. So even there, it was a faith walk, and I learned how to depend on God. So for the last 15 years, I have been just fully in ministry, speaking, teaching, writing my book, traveling, coaching, all of that. Well, in the last few years, people just continued to pray and prophesy over me. They said, I don't think God's done with you in Hollywood. And I said, well, we'll have to see. I'm not going to pursue it because there's not much that I want to do in Hollywood. I'm right. not going to do anything that conflicts with who I am as a believer. And, and I'm not going to do anything that grieves my spirit. Right. So I said, we'll see what God's going to do. So I was uh, on a talk show for my book, Counterfeit Comforts. And I wound up randomly meeting a woman there who I never should have met. She was supposed to fly out the night before. It was such a God story. But I, I met her just for a minute. We just had a, a one minute exchange, but there was an anointing on it and we knew wow. we were supposed to connect. So she happened to be working with uh, on a project with the uh, writers of the movie, God's Not Dead. Mm -hmm. You remember yeah. God's Not Dead? Yes, ma'am. Hit Christian film, uh, Carrie wow. and Chuck are the team. The, yes. they're, they're, uh, Chuck Konzelman and Carrie Solomon are yes. the writers of that movie. So she, uh, was meeting with them and she said, oh, I, I met this woman. She was interesting. I just felt a connection with her and she mentioned my name and all of a sudden they're Googling me, looking me up and they said, we want to meet her. So she calls me, says, these guys want to meet you. I said, okay, let's see what happens here. So I went, met him, had a coffee. We had just a connection. There was an anointing on it and we all said, they said, uh, we know that there's a divine something here. We don't know if it's for this movie we're working on right now. But if it's not, it's for something. We, we just go by the Lord. So yes. if it's this movie, God will tell us. If it's not, but we're, we're not going to lose touch with you. And I said, hey, I'm all about moving with the flow of the Spirit. I only want to be where God wants me. That's right. To, so they, they told me a little bit about the movie, Unplanned, which I'll tell you in a minute. And as soon as they started telling me the story, I just felt as if I wanted to be a part of this story. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so two, two weeks later, they called and they said, we'd like you to come in and read for one of the lead roles. And I said, okay. Went in and read. A couple weeks after that, they said, you're hired. We want you to do this movie. Wow. And I was flying off on location for a month in Oklahoma. And wow. so 15 years later, I'm back in a lead part in a movie that is a, for such a time as this movie, mm -hmm. God hand all over it, kingdom of God, and using all these gifts that God put in me that I haven't really been using for so many years right. and now using them to glorify the kingdom. So mm -hmm. it's pretty exciting. Wow. Any pressures um, uh, from Hollywood concerning this film? Any persecutions? Any spiritual attacks against you guys? Um, yeah, let me explain that to you, and then I'll tell you what the film's about, and you'll yes. know why. Yeah. Uh, there were many actors who did not want to take the roles in this movie. Uh, my role, and then there was also the lead actress, uh, were the two the two female leads, because people made it clear that they might not work in Hollywood again. Wow. But, yeah. wow. Uh, so let me tell you a little bit about the movie and you'll understand why there's such a resistance. Unplanned is a true story mm -hmm. about a woman named Abby Johnson, who uh, was a young Christian girl on her college campus and she was recruited by Planned Parenthood on the campus. They had a booth set up. And so Planned Parenthood shared with her the propaganda that they profess, which is women's empowerment, helping women, serving women, women's rights, you know, women, women, women. Don't you want to serve women? Mm -hmm. And this Christian girl said, I do. I want to make a difference. I want to be a person of significance. I want right. to be a person of influence. So she goes and um, she starts um, she starts interning. And before you know it, she just is coming right up the ranks. Mm -hmm. Well, I actually play the head of Planned Parenthood. 
Oh, okay. Yeah. Wow. So okay. Wow. A mentor mm -hmm. who really raises her up. So mm -hmm. what happens is after eight years that she's working in the clinic, there are about 22,000 abortions that take place under wow. her reign. Man. And she has believed really what she's been taught, that it's just a clump of cells, it's just a fetus, you're not, it's not even a baby, uh, all of that same rhetoric. Yes. Until one day she gets called into the procedure room because they need a hand. This has never happened. She's never been in a procedure room. She goes in the procedure room, they ask her to hold the wand for the sonogram, and she looks up on the screen and, she, and the doctor is about to ready to do the suction and she sees with her own eyes the baby fighting and resisting being suctioned. My Lord. And mm. she says something to the doctor, what the heck, what is going on here? And he said, oh, they always do that. The baby always resists. So all of a sudden this idea that we're dealing with a clump of cells, she looked at a perfectly formed baby fighting for its life. Oh my God. It's powerful, it's powerful. Oh. So she had a huge revelation. God spoke to her. She realized what she was doing. She left Planned Parenthood, and now she is a, a pro-life advocate. She's a powerhouse. She has a beautiful ministry called Then There Were None, where she rescues uh, workers out of the abortion industry because no one ever grows up and, and, you know, as a little kid says, I just want to work in the abortion industry. Right. <laughs> That's not usually a dream for people. My God, this is, um, this is a powerful movie. It's for such wow. a time as this. God is setting the stage for this movie right oh now with God. this issue with New York where you are. Oh, my yes. God, you got that. Talk to me. Talk to Governor me. Andrew Cuomo and to all of our uh, and, um, uh, Pastor Scott knows this, but to our Global Spiritual Revolution partners a week ago, week and a half ago, uh, Governor Andrew Cuomo here in the great state of New York signed the Reproductive Health Act. Again, the Reproductive Health Act, uh, which now has given the medical community uh, access to abort children 24 weeks or more. In other words, they can abort the child up until the ninth month. Not just a doctor, but a health care provider or a physician's assistant. And I'm going to say this. I'm going to expose the devil here. Uh, New York State Assemblywoman uh, Deborah Glick, capital G-L-I-C, uh, along with her Democratic colleagues, had said after uh, Governor Cuomo signed the bill, she said, and I quote, abortion is a medical procedure, not a crime. Again, <laughs> abortion is a medical procedure and not a crime. This is chaos, uh, woman of God. What say you? <sighs> it's sick. On. Yeah. It, it's, it's unfathomable what is happening in our culture. But I believe God is setting the stage. And yes. I was so excited mm. to be a part of this film because look this yes. is a true yes. story yes. it's a true story this isn't someone coming out trying to have an agenda right. trying to be a bible thumper <laughs> trying to say you know you guys are going to hell and this you're all wrong right. it's none of that this is one woman's story wow. but what it does so beautifully is it lifts the veil mm -hmm. for those who are pro-life or pro-choice yes really get a good look at the truth I'm so passionate as a minister about the truth. Yes, ma'am. We can see in our current culture uh, that the veil has definitely been lifted off the media. Yes. That, you know, they don't call it television programming for nothing. Oh. Television is powerful. It is meant to program us. Yes. What to believe. And this, the, the outlet of the airwaves in the media is powerful. And it's been used by the enemy side primarily, and God hasn't had enough time on the airwaves. So much of what's coming forth is a perverted, biased, untrue um, agenda. Yes. And so we are on the receiving end and we're just believing it. So Planned Parenthood tells us, you know, this is what they do. Abortion is just a small percentage of what they do. Not accurate. Right. <laughs> you know, Planned Parenthood, if you call Planned Parenthood to get prenatal care, to actually plan yes. to be a parent, you can't get any. Because Planned Parenthood does not plan parenthood. Wow. They plan, they plan that you're not going to be a parent. That's what's going to happen. Oh, my God. 
if you ask Christians, even most Christians don't know, let alone people that are not believers, because of what we've been programmed to believe. Now, do I hate Planned Parenthood? Do I hate those people? No, we love people. We love all people. We love the governor uh, of, yes. of New York. We love people. But we do not necessarily love and support their belief systems, their choices, uh, what they are pushing forward in our culture. So what I'm so excited about with this movie is it's going to start a conversation. Yes. And it's going to open your eyes for mm -hmm. you to get a good look at what you think you might believe. And then you can make a better assessment as to what you truly believe. It's exactly what we were talking about with the heart. You know, what yes. do you believe in your heart? You think you believe something because of what you've been told or what you've been surrounded by or your conditioning, but let's show you the truth. And then if you still choose to believe, you are free to believe what you choose to believe. Mm. But let's, let's really see inside the industry. Let's see the motives. Let's see um, the true statistics for the African-American culture. Yes. I mean, oh, I'm you, so glad you brought that up, Sister Scott. Go I ahead. You've got to just say it. The black culture has been targeted yes. from the beginning to basically wipe out the yes. culture. Yes, oh my God. I, you know, woman of God, God is using you so powerfully. I am so excited, I, I'm, I'm happy that you brought it up. Now again, there, black, there's gen, not just genocide, black genocide, and give me two minutes, woman of God. You, Margaret Sanger, I don't hate Margaret Sanger as a person. Margaret Sanger um, established the first abortion clinic in 1916 in Brownsville, New York. Now, at the time, Brownsville, New York was mostly black and there was a few Jews. Mostly now, they're mostly Jewish and a few blacks. Fourteen years later, in 1930, she establishes the first abortion clinic in Harlem, New York. No other location in the country besides Brownsville, New York. Not in Midtown Manhattan, not in Hollywood, not in Chicago, not in Arizona. Why Harlem? And... Dr. W.E.B. Du Bois, I'm going to get in trouble, but well-known African-American philosopher was approached by Margaret Sanger, how do I gain access to the African-American community? W.E.B. Du Bois in 1929, year before, had directed her to, if you want to take over uh, black America, you first must target the black pulpit. So what she did, help me Holy Spirit, along with Dr. Debbie E.B. Du Bois, they contacted uh, Dr. Adam Clayton Powell Sr., the pastor of one of the biggest churches in the country back then, the Apostolic Baptist Church, which is still in existence today here in Harlem, New York, and paid him $500 to approach the Harlem Pastoral Alliance in 1930 to open up um, clinics throughout Harlem, New York. So all of these Afri African-American pastors got paid $500 for what? I know it was the, the life, help me Holy Spirit, of an unborn black child was only worth $500. And one of the main corporates that I'm going to uh, stop, uh, I'm going to stop running my mouth here because you really touched the nerve with me. Again, genocide is genocide, regardless of what, what creed, color, or nationality. But Margaret Singer had said, and we can find this in the Margaret Singer papers housed here at New York University, and also in the 1932 edition of the Birth Review, where she describes African Americans as weeds that must be exterminated. And she said in chapter three, uh, uh, sentence, uh, actually the second sentence in chapter three of the birth review in 1932, she says the unsafest position for a black child to be in is in his or her mother's womb. What I do not understand, and help me with this woman of God, I don't understand why the African American community is working in cahoots with the Democratic Party to destroy life. I this I know it's demonic, but what would possess someone psychologically 
to media. cut up a child and see his child yeah. scream. Go ahead, woman of God. I, I didn't mean it, to take over, it, but you hit a nerve with me. Please, I love everything that you're speaking. It is, it's the media and our current society is conditioning us that you know, black rights mean Democrat and- Right. Uh, right. <laughs> listen to this, I believe this is an accurate statistic that I just heard. In the last year, or let's just say now, in our current state, more black babies are being killed and aborted than they are being born. Wow. Say that again. Say it again. At this time in our culture, oh. more African American children are being aborted than they are being born. My Lord. Mm. Mm. It's wrong. <laughs> this needs to stop. <laughs> This needs to stop. Mm -hmm. There's so many options, and abortion is just not one. And, and you know, many people have school of thought of, well, if there's a rape or there's this. I mean, I, I don't want to get, I don't want to go too deep. I don't want us to get crazy here, but yeah, this there is, are wow. other options than you know killing, than aborting a child. There are always other options. And one thing they don't tell you in the women's movement, they leave this part out. Uh, very few women feel great about their abortion. They, they are trying to this, start this whole movement now, professing, proud of my abortion, and I'm yeah. so great. Yeah. <laughs> let, let me tell you, I'm going to just be real right now. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, woman of God. You have to be pretty dang shut down and disconnected from mm. who you are as a human being and who you are as a spirit person to feel delighted about that. You have to be quite disconnected from your true nature to feel that. Um, many, many women that I have ministered to, that I have spoken with, that I've heard their testimonies, 10 years, 20 years, 30 years after the trauma of abortion, they're still shamed. You know, many, I just heard an incredible testimony while I was at the Rally for Life in Austin last week speaking. Uh, one woman said for 10 years, she just went hardcore alcohol, counterfeit comforts. Right yes. here, she went counterfeit on yes. it. Because at 16, wow. she didn't know what to do. And she went into the clinic and they basically told her, this is your best choice. This is your life. Don't ruin your life. So she did that and she did ruin her life. She lost years. Oh my feeling horrible and she said she just in the last 10 years I think she went through 20 or 30 years of trauma and then and then she started getting the healing so don't be fooled yes. <laughs> it, it's um it's a traumatic situation that wow. runs deep now can God heal you yes he can yes. is there forgiveness yes there is is this about judging and shaming no, no. I don't want to do that this movie is not doing that this movie is about redemption. This movie is about healing. Yes. This movie is about forgiveness. It's about love. It's about truth. It's about revelation. Um, so look, there's there's enough shame. It's exactly what I've been talking about with counterfeit comforts. Yes. It's not about um, you know bringing more shame. It's about maybe using this as an opportunity that there's some shame or some things that have been buried. And this movie might be a catalyst to unlock some things. We've heard, oh. we've heard from some ladies that certain parts of the movie, it was a little bit hard for them. But oh. I say, I don't want you to be in pain, but at the same time, thank God. Because if there's something still in there that needs to come up and out, yes, and this is an awesome opportunity for release, for oh, freedom and for healing. You know what, woman of God, there is, you know, I the emotion of God is, is speaking through you. The, the power of God. We love what God loves. We hate what God hates. And and not like you said, woman of God, not to get too deep, but Margaret Sanger, um, her father, Michael Hennessy um, Sanger, and I'll say this and leave it alone, uh, had, according to the uh, the birth review in 1932, the paper, the Margaret Sanger papers, which can be, which are housed at New York University, uh, she said that her father had a liaison with an African-American club dancer in Harlem. They had a daughter. And then the daughter at seven years old is found dead in the bedroom of Margaret Singer, the teenager. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm saying that to say this. Woman of God, I'm not afraid to speak truth to power. 
you're not afraid to speak truth to power. I believe, and this is prophecy, and forgive me for running my mouth, woman of God, I, but I believe, thus saith the Lord, that Roe v. Wade will be totally overturned. It is going to go all the way to the Supreme Court, but Roe v. Wade would be totally overturned. That's why they want to destroy uh, President Donald J. Trump. Uh, what say you, woman of God? Mm. I concur. I believe oh. that God is setting the stage. I believe this movie is a piece of what God wants to do to shift our culture. Yes. And yes. Uh, I think there's, you know, every time that we move forward with the light and the truth, there's a there's a pushback, like what happened in New York. Yes. But I, I think God's using all of this to even show the American people. You know, I mean, my goodness, it's like it has to. The enemy overplays his hand. Yes. Abort all the way till birth, the day before birth. Think about that. That that's. What, what, I mean, and then the state legislator in Albany says, "Well, women's lives matter, black lives matter." Well, how about the child's life? I I don't understand. I mean, there's no empathy. It's like it, they are, they're under this trance of, of, of from Satan, woman of God. Oh, what say you? Oh, this well, is powerful. We're breaking it with the truth. You know, it's the truth that makes us free. So we're speaking the truth. I believe that God is taking back the airwaves, and this movie is going to be a part of glory, that, glory. of releasing truth through the media, through uh, parables, through stories. That's how Jesus impacted people. Yes. He didn't uh, yell at people and hold signs and knock people down with their, his sign, you know, his whole story. <laughs> right. <laughs> he didn't throw, you know, stuff on him or whatever. He he told stories because stories reach our heart. So I, I have felt in prayer that the Lord wants to use this story mightily. And I will say this, he, he needs us and we all play a role. Yes. So as the body of Christ, I implore you, to be at the theater, March 29th yeah. is the release date. You, In order for Hollywood to take notice, uh, you can't see the movie three weeks after it opens. You must go on the opening weekend, March 29th, March 30th. You have to go on the opening weekend. If you're a pastor out there listening and you have a pretty good sized church or you're an organization, you have the opportunity to host an event. So you can actually rent out a theater. Go to unplanned.com, unplanned.com. You can rent out a theater, and then you could have your whole congregation come. You could have your event come. You could turn it into a fundraiser. You could turn it into an opportunity for healing. You could do whatever you want. And this way, our box office, we have a lot of theaters, a lot of people seeing the movie. We need the body of Christ yes. to come together and unite on this. Your vote counts and you vote with your ticket <laughs> that's how Come we vote oh. you vote with your ticket i like that wow so i love that issue for you you get your family you get your friends you get your church if you go to a church take this to your pastor say you look at this look up unplanned.com uh show them this information oh i have another little tidbit you ready for this go ready this, if you want to see a 30 minute sneak peek behind the scenes then you text the word baby, B-A-B-Y, to the number on your phone, 53445. So take out your phone, text 53445, and then text the word baby and send. Mm -hmm. You will receive a link to a 30-minute behind the scenes. You'll see uh, clips from the movie. Uh, you'll see an interview from me, an interview from the real Abby Johnson. The actress who plays Abby Johnson is Ashley Bratcher. The wow. directors, the producers. Uh, it's Once you see this 30-minute behind the scenes, you will be excited. You'll be fired up. You'll be emotional. So text the word baby to yes. 53445 and go to unplanned.com. Every single one of us matters so that this movie has legs and it can do what God wants to do with it. I, I know, oh, I glory. know that God wants to Oof. use this movie. It's powerful. It's emotional. It's beautiful. Oh, my. I, I, woman of God, I, I believe you have a word for women. Uh, I, I sense there is a, a prophetical anointing upon you right now. Um, what is God speaking to you right now? And and this w Me Too movement, again, if I'm wrong, Pastor Scott, Sister Scott, correct me. 
I'm not against the premise of the Me Too movement, but when Me Too becomes weaponized to destroy manhood, uh, th- th- there's a conspiracy conspiracy <laughs> to emasculate manhood. You see it in Hollywood. You see it in these Gillette commercials, uh, or you know, concerning manhood that's being emasculated. What is God showing you? There, there's a word that you had for for women, but for America, w- what is that word right now? Oh, I have a few things to say about that. Authentic feminism is about being empowered, is about knowing that my worth and value uh, is equal to a man. I can't do everything a man can do, Mm -hmm. nor can a man do everything I can do. But my gifting, uh, the way God created me, is just as valuable as a man. And there's a place for every woman that a man can't fill. But... Alas, there is a place that for a man that a woman can't fill. And that's where the feminist movement has been perverted and contorted. Uh, feminism, real feminism, isn't, isn't about putting another down so I can rise up. Now, me too. I, I am behind women having a voice. I am behind men that have been improper, being exposed. <laughs> mm-hmm. I am behind women being uh, believed for what they've gone through, but see how the enemy just likes to yep. overplay the hand again. Now it's not just women getting a voice, but it's women hurting men. <laughs> so I don't wanna hurt men, and I, I will tell you point blank, I am not a feminist. I will not say, oh, a woman needs a, a man as much as a fish needs a bicycle. Hey, I'm a fish that can ride a bicycle, and I want a bicycle, and I don't <laughs> wanna be in a world without men. That's right. You know, what the, what the Lord was speaking to me is that it's time for women to rise, but not uh, for men to be put down. It's time for women to rise, and it's time for men to rise. It's time for women to take their place, and it's time for men to take their place. Not above, not beneath, but side by side. Mm-hmm. Uh, true feminism is femininity. It's not being a man in a man's world. It's being a woman in the world. <laughs> it's wow. not a man's world. It's not a woman's world. But it's about owning who you are and who God created you to be. I believe that there's a time that's going to rise right now where it's the true Wonder Woman. And I speak this to the to the watchers and listeners. Real Wonder Women are about to rise up. Oh, Not boy. Wonder, wonder Women like we saw in the movie, which there were things I liked about the movie. There was, there was, a, there was a, an empowerment theme to the movie. But again, feminism had to get its little tentacles in there and show us that the utopia was a land where no men existed. That's right. Amazing. So wow. This is, again, how, how this, the culture is infiltrating us to believe I am Wonder Woman. I am powerful. I do not need a man. True utopia is a place where no men exist, just women. Because right. women rule the world. Girls rule. I'm over the whole girls rule. I'm over girls rule the world. <laughs> you know, we rule the world. People rule the world. Right. People, God rule the world. Women and men rule the world. Wow. So, so I, I believe that what's, what's, what's being released now is a true feminist movement. Mm-hmm. I want to be on the forefront of that. I want to help women uh, realign with what true empowerment means. Uh, what true equality means, what uh, what it means to really be um, a powerhouse, beautiful, feminine, strong, equal woman. And it's not to the detriment of men because men are valuable. Men are needed. Are men better than us? No. Are they different than us? Yes. Did we actually come from man? Did God actually make us from man? Yeah. <laughs> You know, we're supposed to fit together because together we're more powerful. The Bible's real, real clear. Two are more powerful than one. Mm-hmm. And this whole idea that I don't need anybody, I don't need a man, I'm just going to do my own thing, it's a bunch of ridiculousness. Because mm-hmm. a woman on top of her game and making tons of money and doing all that, that's great. But if you're doing it in lieu of being in an intimate love relationship with a family, I don't know. I can. I pretty much guarantee that there's not a ton of joy there coming home from your big powerhouse million dollar a year job alone. 
by yourself. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? This, like you said, me too. I'm stepping on some toes right now. I, please I keep, keep stepping. I'm going to step on some more because I told you I got a Ruby and Scott anointing. So I'm going to say this right now. <laughs> <laughs> the Me Too movement, you've been weaponized by devils like George Soros, who are giving millions of dollars, including another devil by the name of Madonna. Okay, and listen, no weapon that's formed against President Trump shall prosper. Now you got Black Lives Matter. Well, newsflash, all lives matter. But Black Lives Matter, they have been weaponized. You talk about counterfeit comforts. So, you know, the enemy many times will use victimization, including women, too. Um, and like you said, should women have a voice? Absolutely. But when it becomes weaponized, let's destroy Look at the, the Brett Kavanaugh hearings. They knew good and well that man was innocent, but they wanted to destroy him. My father said once, you cannot destroy the 100th innocent man because of the previous 99 who were guilty. And you, you, you can't. So uh, counterfeit comforts, this this unplanned, how, how in our remaining minutes, this movie, how has unplanned changed your life? Oh, well, I Lord. think it's about to change my life even more oh, when the movie comes out. Uh, I'm just thrilled to be a part of what I believe God is doing on earth currently. And this topic, this issue, Glory. I believe God's all over it. Yes. <laughs> and yes. Um, I believe uh, this movie Unplanned is right at the heart of what God is about to release through our nation. Oh, uh, to really show people the truth, to bring uh, love and redemption. Again, I can't say it enough. It's not about judgment. Right. Uh, it's a fantastic film. It just it's 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 incredible. Wow. March 29th, people need to be at the theaters or go to unplanned.com and consider hosting an event because wow. um, uh, it's a for such a time as this. I see the I see the church overtaking Hollywood. It started with the Passion of the Christ many years ago. I, I, I see, I see you, woman of God. I'm telling you. Um, it, having your own studio, oh, oh, oh Lord, I feel an anointing on me. I, 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 I know. I see you having your own Christian studio. There is a an apostolicity, an apostolic power that you're going to bring to Hollywood. The Lord is saying you're not done with Hollywood. Now you're going to bring Christ to Hollywood. And I, I want to share this real quickly. I don't know if you've heard this news that uh, uh, it came out um, through the DSM, the Diagnostic. Uh, statistical manual of the American Psychological Association where they have deemed manhood as a mental disorder. Okay, and I think, think about this. this stuff manhood as a mental disorder and they have removed the mental disorder tag from homosexuality and lesbianism. Counterfeit comforts. Count, counterfeit comforts. I mean, I, it's just... Oh, we got to get you here to New York City. I would love to. I love New York. I was born in Queens. Yes. Um, your family. Now, are you, uh, it's to my understanding, you are Italian. Am, am I correct in saying this? Okay. Yeah. All right. I, I'm, <laughs> I'm uh, doing the Italian hand. Uh, okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure you love pasta. You can cook pasta. I but, love some pasta. Yeah. And, and your, your name your maiden name is it Lamorte? How's it pronounced? My maiden name is Lamort. What does it mean? It was originally Lamorte, which means the death. Wow. Yes, that was my maiden name. Wow. And your family, are they in the church or are they in the evangelical church? or? I have a little bit of both. Some of my family is, is in there and some not as much. Okay. Wow. Um. Where, where do you see the Lord taking you um, in the next five years? I know it's hard for us to see visually sometimes, but where do you see the Lord taking you, your husband, your family, apostolically um, in this generation, in, within the next three to five years? Jeez. 
you know, it's always a surprise. I didn't think I'd be here. If you asked me two years ago, I'd be starring in a movie and back doing this. I, I never would have thought that that would be the case. So, um, you know, again, I'm just passionate about truth and I would love to be able to release that through as many vehicles through the airwaves as possible. Yes. So I love the idea of having a show, being on radio, um, just uh, instead of reaching, you know, hundreds, thousands, tens of thousands, starting to be able to reach millions. Wow. Can we get to a few questions? Um, yeah. We have a lot of questions coming in. Uh, first question, her name, one of our faithful listeners, her name is Maria from Santiago, Chile. Her right. question is, how do I recover emotionally from three abortions? Uh, looks like she's in a Pentecostal church there in Santiago, but... Uh, emotionally, it seems like she can't get over her past three abortions. Uh, what are the steps that she has to take to get over this emotionally? Oh, Maria, I'm so sorry that you're in that situation. And I think that, again, with Unplanned coming out, I think it's going to be an opportunity for the church to bring this topic to the forefront so we can actually talk about it, deal with it, and the leaders in the church can help their um, their people, their congregation get the healing. Um Oh gosh, what do I what do I even say to that? Uh, I think uh, counterfeit comforts would help you. I think that um, gosh, you know, I, 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 it's such a personal question. I, I really don't know exactly how to answer that, except that if you continue to seek, uh, I believe God will will bring the healing. <laughs> you know, if you if you get into His presence. Uh, there's a way to to release and do that. I can do that with you. You can contact me. We can do some coaching. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's such a personal, intimate question that I honestly don't know how to just give you, you know, a couple steps to do it. Um, if, if connecting with God more deeply is part of what you want to do, I know that Counterfeit Comforts, the book, will give you those little nuggets so that you can get into that place of pain with the Holy Spirit and release it. Which, by the way, Bishop... Uh, yes. I think the statistic is about 70% of abortions are from our Christian faith. Wow. No, our Catholic and Christian faith. So we have, you know, thousands upon thousands upon millions of women and men too that have been touched by abortion sitting in our churches, sitting in the Catholic church, sitting in the Christian church and, and dealing like Maria with this, with this, this pain that's been in there. She loves God, seeking God, going to church, but hasn't been able to deal with that issue. So I believe this is now the time where it's going to come to the forefront and the church is going to address it and the leaders will um, be able to take their, their people into a healing process. And I'm happy to be a part of that. I'm excited to go speak in churches now around the country with the movie as the platform, but to really do my real message, which is helping step men and women through the process of emotional healing. Excellent. We have an excellent question and powerful answer from uh, Earl. From, he's from Las Vegas, Nevada. His question is for you, uh, Sister Scott. Um, though my father has been passed away for 25 years, can I still forgive my father of molesting me as a teenager? It seems like he, him too, he emotionally he can't get over that he's a minister yeah. as well what are the what are the steps that brother earl can well, take? can you you actually you have to it's not can you forgive you have to forgive because the unforgiveness doesn't bind him it binds you wow. forgiveness and unforgiveness and offense is so deep like there's no way we can teach on it in five minutes but it is a an area that i love to teach deeply on because sometimes we think that if we let go and forgive, we're actually um, validifying what a person did, we're making it okay. No, not at all. You're not making what they did okay, but what you're doing is saying, you can no longer torment me. You can no longer steal from me. I'm not gonna give you another minute of my life by hating you. Um, can I give you three steps to forgiveness? No, it's it's so intimate. Wow. It's so deep. <laughs> I can't, I can't just give you the three quick steps. Right. I would, again, get counterfeit comforts. It will start to move you in that direction. Uh, I have a teaching on my website about offense. If actually, this is perfect. If mm -hmm. you go to my website, everyone who's listening and watching right now, uh, go to robiascott.com, and if you plug in your email address, I will send you four free teachings. 
four Good. free teachings. One is on tools for transformation. So I will start to put some tools in your hand. The other teaching is a three-part series on the love walk. It's about loving mm. others and forgiveness. So this is good for you, Earl. It's about loving yourself. Um, so I believe there's going to be some key nuggets in these downloads for everyone who's watching. And the combination of the downloads plus counterfeit comforts yes. will really get you moving in the right direction. And then if you want to go even deeper with me, you can see it right there on my website. It's called Transformation Tuesdays. Uh, we have a coaching program with an incredible group of people. And then we'll get a little bit more personal. Wow. So really, as, as much as you want to go... Um, I'll be there with you, but I believe this love series for you, Earl, will give you some answers that you're looking for so that you can forgive. So sorry you endured that. I'm so sorry that you went through that. Oh, glory. Um, mm, this is powerful. Um, this is my personal question, woman of God. Um, I'm a fourth generation uh, bishop, minister, and I come from a long lineage of preachers and in and not you know i don't mind telling our business in order to for someone else to be healed uh, um there is a word in psychology called proximal abandonment and and that that's a condition where though the parent is there physically in the home but emotionally they are absent mm -hmm. so my father who poured into me, into my brother spiritually, apostolically, but emotionally, he didn't have it to give because his father was, um, went through this proximal abandonment. And so my question is to you, woman of God, um, I think for the first time in, oh God, in years, a year ago, I said to my father, I love you. And he broke down and cried. Because he thought that I never loved him because I never showed him. And I was beginning to show proximal abandonment to my kids who are my, mm -hmm. my daughter and my son. Mm -hmm. uh, but the Lord, my question is, is this in your travels, is this condition a big problem uh, among leaders, especially with men, where they're gifted, they're anointed? But emotionally, they're not there. They, you can't give something that you don't have. Um, what is the mind of God showing you in this regard? Anointing and wholeness are two completely different things. Mm. An anointing mm. is God can give you an anointing because you press into the things of God. You're praying, you're fasting, you're seeking. Right. <clears throat> he also gives you an anointing to bless the people. What, what's interesting is that you can operate at a high level of anointing, but very broken yourself. Yes. Wow. So, gifts of God are without repentance. Mm -hmm. so he won't usually take that gift away because it's blessing the people. But I'm passionate about wholeness. I want to move in the power of God, but I also want to be in peace in my life. <laughs> mm -hmm. So there, it must be, as you said at the beginning of the program, it's body, soul, and spirit. Yes. We must uh, sow and grow in our spiritual understanding, sow and grow with our body, our health, our physical, and sow and grow in the emotional and the soul. Because you can be very strong in the spirit and poor in the soul. You can be very rich in the soul, literally have a ton of money and be quite poor in the spirit or poor in your health and your body. Hmm. So if you're poor in one area, you're not doing well. You know, I don't care how much money you have. If you're sick in your body, you're not really prospering. You're not doing well. And I will say that even if you are operating at a high level of anointing, but you're not prospering in your soul, you're not doing well. <laughs> because it many looks, times they use the anointing to mask those problems. It looks fancy because yeah. you're up on stage and you're moving in the gifts and people are, you know, celebritizing you and mm -hmm. all of that. But you have to lay your head on the pillow with your own self at night. Wow. You live in you. <laughs> Yeah, And so, uh, and that stuff can destroy you. That kind of anointing can destroy you if you don't have the character and the health and the wholeness for that anointing to rest upon. And we see it in the body of Christ. We see awesome men and women of God falling apart, affairs, uh, addictions, all sorts of having to step down from uh, huge positions yes. because yeah. of, of, you know, of issues. And am I judging them? No, no. Because I understand that you got to do get that soul healing as well. Hmm. 
Excellent wisdom. Um, another question we have Abner from um, looks like from from Israel, Jerusalem, Israel. Mm -hmm. he's a I want to come visit he, you. I want to come visit yeah, you. Yeah, he's, he's a rabbinical student at the U University of Jerusalem. His question for you, uh, Sister Scott: uh, How can I recover from religious abuse? Ooh, oh my! Okay. He wants to. Uh, he's a Messianic student, but his parents. Or hardcore orthodox or orthodoxy. How? What are the steps to <laughs> for him to yeah. recover from religious abuse? Again, it all comes down to what are the beliefs in your heart. So I think each and every one wow. of us have to be the gardeners. We have to guard our heart and be the gardeners of our heart. Just because mm -hmm. one pastor did me wrong, I have a choice to say, "All oh, church is ridiculous. Right. I'm done with church." <laughs> That's my choice. Yes. <laughs> you know, if you had a, a harsh religious situation, then you have to kind of deal in your heart and recognize, okay, hold on, that's not God. That's not a true representation of God. That's a work that you have to start to filter. You have to pull out the weeds. Mm -hmm. You have to sow some new seeds. You have to navigate that and recognize, hmm, I have a view of God um, that's been skewed because of what's been put on me. And because of that, maybe I've been resistant or maybe... Uh, you know, I, I'm pursuing God, but at the same time, I have these ideas of God that are not accurate. See, that's where you have to go and walk this out with you and the Lord and recognize, okay, wait a minute, that's not who God really is. I need to sow the truth in, and I need to pull the junk out. Mm. So regardless, we have to, all of us have to do that across the board because we can all say, oh, I've been burned by church. I'm done with church. Oh, I've been burned by, by men. Forget men. I'm done with men because right. men have hurt me. You know, that, and then we put up these walls and that's not where we want to live because when we put up a wall to keep the junk out, we also kind of keep the good stuff from coming in, including God. Mm -hmm. God, you know, we need to learn how to break those walls down so we can have the full life. I hear the spirit of the Lord um, speaking to my spirit to ask you, what is the greater problem, addiction or the pain that produced the addiction? Ooh. Well, I would say the pain that produced the addiction. How do how okay, reveal to us the steps. How do we how do we how do we get at the root of not just a pain but a particular type of pain that has produced that particular type of addiction? Again, it's not that I can give you just, you know, this is how you do it, go right. do it. I do think the book takes you through a, a process and it helps you navigate and will lead your way into those places. Right. So it's not a one, two, three fix, but it is important to recognize that it is about the roots. And for many of us, the roots can be universal and what we turn to is unique. Mm. So, you know, I could feel rejected and turn to food. You can feel rejected and turn to heroin. <laughs> right. So <laughs> fixing the heroin problem or fixing the food problem isn't really dealing with the issue. For instance, I, I mentioned this in my book when I did some research um, from gastric bypass, those who had a huge uh, issue mm. with food and their weight got out of control and did gastric by bypass. Now, am I saying gastric bypass is wrong? No, you'd be led by the spirit about what you're gonna do. But one statistic I found was that um, doctors were finding that those who had undergone gastric bypass, now that they couldn't eat large quantities of food, were consuming large quantities of alcohol. Wow, wow, interesting. That's, but that some, some of the patients were drinking up to 10 martinis a day. <laughs> So if that does not sum up the comfort, I don't I don't know what does. If you don't deal with the root, it will just manifest in different ways. So how do you deal with the root? I'm telling you, right here is <laughs> everything I have. Everything I have for you is in here. And you notice, uh, Pastor Scott, Sister Scott, the temptations of Jesus Christ throughout the Gospels. Um, I shared this um, kind of a, a revelation uh, with the love of my life not too long ago that the temptations from Satan, um, and of course we know Satan has three dimensions. He's Lucifer L, Satan S, Devil D, LSD. Saying that to say this, the temptations that came to Jesus, they were the same type of temptation per gospel, 
but they came in different numerical orders. Uh, in other words, what I'm saying that many times, okay, you got the victory over this addiction for this season, but the enemy oftentimes comes back another season, brings another addiction, but its foundation is still the same addiction as before. So am I correct in saying this or am I too far off base? As you were saying that, I was remembering the scripture that talks about with Jesus, the enemy tried to come at him, but there was nothing in him. That's it. See, so that is quite powerful. And this is exactly what we're talking about with the emotional healing. You know, some of us try to just deal with a demonic spirit. Oh, I just break that spirit. I break that spirit. Now, that's important. I believe in breaking a spirit. Right. But a spirit also feeds on something in you. Hmm. So you Explain can, that further. Go Not to cut you off. Go deep. There's the teacher. Me. Go deeper into that. Um, take us a little deeper into that. That's why it has to be a combination of the soul and the spirit. If you just deal with the soul, if you're just doing therapy, but you don't recognize that there's a spiritual dynamic, for instance, there's a generational spirit that's been attached to your family line, right. and you're just dealing with the soul, and you're just trying to renew your thoughts, but you haven't taken authority over a spirit that needs to go, you'll get freedom, but you won't get totally free. And, and, and the other side is if you just kind of deal with everything, I just keep rebuking it, and I just keep rebuking yes. it, I keep rebuking it, <laughs> but I don't go deep and do the work. Right. And that stuff can come back because it's, it's, it's like there's bait in you and it comes and it feeds off that bait. Mm -hmm. So you want to do the combination of moving the spirit out and also dealing with the soul issue mm -hmm. so that you get the full freedom. So just like Jesus, that junk tried to come at him, but there was nothing in him. Uh, listen to what you just said. Nothing in, there was no triggers, nothing that the enemy could use um, uh, against Christ. Wow. Can you, no, I'm not going to put you on the spot. Uh, you know, staff <laughs> keeps telling me, stop asking people, do they want to come back? But we, we would love for you to come back. I would love to come back. I've enjoyed this conversation. I love that we can go deep because often when you do a show, you have five or seven minutes. I'm deep. I can't get into too much. That's good in five minutes. I need time to talk <laughs> it out. So this is fantastic. Oh. I would love, to, I want to come to New York. Yes. We're going to set that up. I would love for you to come. And because, uh, you have a mantle, you have, um, your ministry is transformational. And I, I love how authentic you are. You're real. There's no pretensions. And before we close out to, uh, tonight, uh, can you give us information where people can buy your materials and what offers are you, are you offering to our listeners to, uh, this afternoon? Well, the first thing is if you go to my website, rubiascott.com, and you put your email address in there, you will instantly receive four free downloads. So that's about a little $20 gift for you. Uh, there's a love series that talks about uh, forgiveness and healing and loving yourself, which is a powerful series. Wow. And then Tools for Transformation, which is one of my key teachings. I love tools, 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 tools. Yes. I would say start with that. Uh, please follow me on social media. Instagram is Robia Scott. Facebook, Robia Scott. I'm constantly giving updates for the movie and um, sharing little bits of inspiration and things along those lines. If you want me to sign your book to you and you want it personalized, then you can get it from my website, RobiaScott.com. If you want to just be, you know, quick and easy and go to Amazon.com, you can do that too. You can get it there. Um, definitely unplanned. You want to check out unplanned.com. Yes. You want to consider hosting a screening, talking to your church. If you're a church leader or you have an organization that you might want to do a fundraiser, get behind the movie. It is in theaters March 29th. That's the day that all of America needs to go. <laughs> uh, wow. March 29th. And that weekend is when we need to go. I think, oh, oh. And the last thing was if you want to see a 30 minute behind the scenes. Yes of the movie, text the number 53445 and text the word baby, B-A-B-Y, to the number, not two, to the number 53445. And you will receive a link to a 30 minute behind the scenes. And let me tell you, once you see this, you'll understand why I'm so riled up and so fired up and passionate because <laughs> you'll be fired up too. I am so excited. And I want to thank you, woman of God, for it. Um, truly taking the time out of your business schedule to go into this deep conversation because uh, truly today was the Lord's doing. 
and it was marvelous in our eyes. And thank you for allowing us to sit at your feet in Christ. And I believe this was the beginning of a new beginning, even for uh, Global Spiritual Revolution Radio and for the healing that needs to take place in the city. Thank you so much. Thank you. I really appreciate you. You are awesome. You're a great interviewer and you're just full of the spirit. I, I just applaud you for what you're doing. Excellent. Can you give us a, a quick word of prayer, a blessing over us in Jesus' yeah. name? Oh, Father, I thank you, Lord, that everything we've spoken today uh, has been sealed. And like I said, your your spirit is is uh, caught, not taught. So I thank you, Lord, that there's an anointing right now that is breaking the yoke off men and women that are watching and listening. I just declare right now that there's an anointing that's breaking the yoke, that heaviness is lifting, yes. oppression is going, that there's a lightness. I just declare that it is your time. It's your time to rise into the fullness of who God created you to be. Oh, that this is your season where you're going to start to break out of limitations that have held you back for five years, 10 years, 15 years, 20 years. You're going to start to step into the new. It's a new year. It's a new time. So I just thank yes. you and praise you, Father, that you're doing a new work. And I, yes. I thank you, Lord, that those that are, are saying, how do I go deeper? Where do I go? Lord, you're a lamp unto their feet and a light unto their path. I thank you, Lord, that you lead them to those that will impart to them, whether it be me, their spiritual leaders, someone online, that you would give them the answers they're looking for. Because the word says, if you seek with a sincere heart, you will come through and you will reveal to them. So I pray for all the men and women, the questions that were asked, that you, Holy Spirit, are their counselor. You're going to be with them and lead them and guide them every step of the way. I thank you, Lord, for a wave of healing mm. going through all the listeners right now. A wave of healing yes. into our nation. A wave of healing being released into New York. New York, I still love you. I still have a heart for you, New York. We still love you. America loves you. America loves you. We thank you for the heart of New York. We thank you that the heart is returning to the Father's heart. I thank you, Lord, that New York, that this, this foul law is going to be overturned, along with Roe versus Wade is going to be overturned, and the heart of America yes. is coming to the heart of the father and the heart of babies. We just release it. We declare it in Jesus mighty name. Amen. Amen to all of our global spiritual revolution partners and our listeners, please uh, sow into our global apostolic movement. Please go online right now at paypal.me forward slash GSRR media group. Again, beloved, that's paypal.me forward slash GSRR media group. When you give unto the Lord, he'll give you more to give. Good measure, press down, shaking together and running over. Truly, the Lord will give unto your bosom. For whatever you meet, the Lord will meet it to you again. It's on your screen right there, paypal.me forward slash GSRR media group. Please get out your credit card right now. We truly need your finances. You know, it takes more than Sheikam in the car uh, to run a global ministry. We need your finances. So paypal.me forward slash GSR Media Group. Please, whether it is $5, $50, $500, you will be giving unto the Lord so that we can teach the gospel that the Lord Jesus Christ preached. God bless you, uh, Pastor Scott. We love you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You're coming back for part two and you're coming to New York City. Have a wonderful afternoon. To all of our Global Spiritual Revolution partners, we'll be posting this uh, on YouTube.com forward slash Global Spiritual Revolution Radio and throughout uh, Facebook and Twitter throughout uh, social media. We'll see you next time here and only here on Global Spiritual Revolution Radio. Good afternoon. God bless you. <laughs>